this story is on paper because it is involving events that happened very recently in my life. Uh, on that note, uh, May is National Mental Health Awareness Month and that has a lot to do with every day of my life. So, Rosecrans Ware Center is a facility on West State Street where people with little to no income and struggling with mental illness can go and receive treatment. Triage is the name of a room in Rosecrans Ware Center that has a circle of green reclining chairs in a kitchen area with a long table, there's a TV and a refrigerator that is filled with applesauce, pudding, juice, I'm sitting in an office in triage in Rosecrans Ware Center with a woman who's trying to determine whether or not I'm actually going to kill myself. She asks me to list three things that I like about myself, and I'm pretty sure that if I fail to answer this question, I'll have to stay in triage overnight on crisis watch, so I frantically rack my brain trying to come up with any sort of response, and absolutely nothing comes to mind. <clears throat> Luckily for me, this lady, after talking to me for about another hour, decided that I was okay and that I could get to go home. Mental illness runs in my family. So does pride, and that's exactly why no one ever talks about the, fa the fact that grandma is on antidepressants and her father killed himself, and my mother has always blamed my father's depression for their divorce. It wasn't until I started writing poems about my own struggles with mental illness that any of these stories came to light. It's been five years since I was in college and woke up depressed. What I learned is that waking up depressed is a lot like waking up on any other day of your life. Um, you'll swear at your alarm clock and then you'll slam it off and then you'll shuffle into the kitchen and open the refrigerator and you won't see any microwavable food or food that's ready to eat and then you'll swear at the food because you have to actually cook it and then you'll kind of give up on food and then you'll go brush your teeth and try to go about your day. That's how it started for me. But uh, for the past five years, I've also been living with really intrusive thoughts. Um, these are, have all been negative, uh, mostly thoughts telling me things like, you know, life isn't really worth living anymore. It's kind of pointless. It's not worth doing anything. You are pointless. You are pointless. You are pointless. No one could ever actually love you. If they say they love you, it's probably just because they pity you. And that's how it's been for five years. And for the most part, I have struggled with these things um, and the illness that causes them by myself. I took up drinking a scary amount of alcohol, uh, which is why I will not be purchasing anything tonight. Sorry. Um, and you know, when I, when I graduated from college, um, I went to my parents for the first time and said, you know, I think I need some help. And I promptly got kicked out of my parents' house. Um, that caused a lot of my thought process to involve extreme violence against myself. Um, I started hurting myself. Things were just really unbearable. Um, this actually also meant that I destroyed pretty much every romantic or f like friendly relationship that I had because the negativity in my head meant that I really <laughs> struggled with trusting people and I was really bad at communicating. Um, and that really only made me feel more alone. You know, I was already thinking every day that I was worthless and the fact that I was pretty actively destroying um, any relationship with someone who would want to be near me did not help that at all. And uh, looking back, I realized that the proud part of me never wanted to get help. I was convinced, absolutely convinced, that I wasn't really sick. Um, when I started reading up on like depression and things like that, they, they state a lot of typical symptoms. I didn't have a lot of them. I was like, well, I get out of bed, I brush my teeth, I still go to work, I go to class, I graduated from college with honors, I am not sick. <laughs> and that's not to judge people who have experienced things differently than me, absolutely not. This is awful stuff, but I was so convinced in my head that I did not need help. Um, and that, that basically shaped my life for 
years. This idea that I'm okay, I'm, gonna, I'm fine, I'm fine, while simultaneously destroying the important parts of my life. And, you know, I have, a, I have a guess that every person who ends up in recovery for mental illness and maybe any other problems stemming from that kind of has a moment where something happens and it just clicks in their head that they need help, um, unless they're forced to get it. That is something I honestly believe. And that moment for me happened four days ago. Um, so it's really fresh, and I'm not going to go into details about what happened, but it was so awful. Um, the things that I did were so, so terribly awful, and I felt so incredibly guilty. It was excruciating. I didn't know how I could possibly get through this. Like, I was sitting on my couch for like 45 minutes thinking about different ways I could kill myself, and I was, felt guilty for not killing myself. I'm like, I am so worthless that I can't even end my own life, and it was awful. It was, it's really hard to explain to someone who's never been there, but it was the most excruciating guilt that I had ever felt in my life. And through that, there was something in the back of my head that kept telling me, you know, if you're really feeling guilty about this and it's not some sort of like self-pitying guilt, you're gonna do something to change this. And uh, that was the moment that I decided to get professional help for all this, basically the illness that was causing all these horrible things to happen in my life. Um, I made the choice to not let it rule my life anymore. And um, so it's really interesting because this is a process I'm currently going through. Um, and it's actually, it's been a really strange to learn that it was hard to say goodbye to that person that I used to be the person who was incredibly sick, who did not want help, who did not need help. Um, but right now, in my recovery process, I can think, I'm thinking that this is a good choice. And uh, I've been sitting in a lot of waiting rooms lately um, at Rosecrans, and you know, I'm surrounded with people who like look sick and then, as I tap my foot really nervous, you know, when I'm waiting to finish my mental health assessment or whatever this appointment holds, I have to remind myself that just because I don't look sick doesn't mean that I don't need help. And it doesn't mean that I don't deserve it. So, thank you.